it's fantastic to be here with you. Thank you so much for asking me. Um, this is my home city. I was born in Sheffield. Um, so I know, right? So I grew up in Walkley. Anybody from Sheffield 6 in the house? Yep. Brilliant. Best postcard. Um, so I grew up in Sheffield 6 and about the age of 13, 14, which I guess some of you are, um, I was at school one day with one of my best friends who, uh, who's called Katie, whose kids are here today. And um, Katie's been my friend for a long time and she was a really good friend to me, Katie, and her sister Nikki and other people at my school. And they went to church, but I didn't. My family are not religious at all. I was christened as a baby, but I was never taken to church. And uh, Katie was my friend at school. And I really liked Katie, I still do. And um, I, she invited me along to church. And because I liked Katie, I really wanted to make her happy. And I really, really wanted to spend time with her. So I thought I would go along to church. It was also helped by the fact that there was a boy at church that I really liked. I know, right? In fact, I'd seen him at school one day and said to Katie, who's that? And she said, that's the vicar's son. So when she invited me to church, it really helped that the vicar's son was sort of cute. Um, me and the vicar's son have been married for 19 years. So um, you might very well be sat next to your future life partner today. Who knows? Um, <laughs> everyone's looking at each other going, really? <laughs> um, so that's how I started going to church. Basically, I went to church to keep other people happy and for a snog and ended up with a dog collar. So it's not really what I had in mind. So be careful when people invite you to church because you might end up with more than you thought. So I never expected to be a vicar. It really wasn't what I had in mind, okay? Because vicars are the kind of sensible grown-ups that stand at the front. But I like being the center of attention. All right? I'm a desperate attention seeker. There's nothing better in my mind than being on a stage with a microphone in my hand with lots of people listening to me. It's what I really, really love doing. And when I was little, I spent a lot of time with my mum and dad telling me off for being a show-off. Oh, you're a dreadful show-off. Oh, aren't you a bad show-off? Uh, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's a little bit like God's gone, oh, you're a show-off. All right, then. I love that. I can use that one because you see that's the thing God wants to use the best of us and the worst of us he wants to use the things that we love about ourselves and the things that we don't really like about ourselves because he uses all of us all the time for his glory so what happened to me well I became a vicar in the church of England and it really wasn't what I had in mind I ended up at vicar school um, which is a bit like Hogwarts but with worse fashion um, it's really not like Hogwarts me and Richard trained at the same place it's really not like Hogwarts at all um, and I ended up at vicar school, and I ended up doing all sorts of things. And I presumed that when I became a vicar, I would have to be less of myself. And people kept saying this to me, oh, you won't be allowed to do that when you're a vicar. Oh, you won't be allowed to say that when you're a vicar. And it really worried me that the minute that I got this around my neck, I would somehow morph and change into some really straight-laced, boring kind of person. I thought my hair was going to fall out. I thought I might turn into a man. Uh, I thought that I might have to not wear lippy and, and be myself. And I was really worried about that. And actually, the very opposite has happened. Because what's happened is, I am more me now than I've ever been. I'm more me now than I've ever been. God does not want us to water ourselves down. He wants us to turn ourselves up to 11 on that dial. Not even up to 10, but turning ourselves up to 11. Something happened to me three years ago. What happened to me is I do a lot of weddings, which should come as no surprise to you. I also do a lot of funerals and a lot of christenings, but not necessarily in that order. But I do a lot of weddings, and um, I had a couple who came to me and said, we'd like to get married at your church. And I said, yes, because that's the word I always say. I say yes all the time, and then I try and figure out how I'm going to make that happen. All right? So I go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we can do that. And then I go, how are we going to do that? So I said yes to this couple. I will marry you, no problem. And they said, we want something a little bit different at our wedding. We want something that nobody else has had. We want something that when our friends walk away from our wedding, they go, that was the best wedding we've ever been to. And I said, well, I'm the marrying vicar. Of course, it's going to be the best wedding you've ever been to. Come on, I'm great. Anyway, so and I'm really humble and full of humility as well, obviously. Um, so what happened was they said, what do you do? And I said, what do you want? And we came up with this.
good, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? It was fantastic to do. It was amazing to do. Gary and Tracy put that on YouTube the week after their wedding, mainly because they got some friends who weren't at the wedding and they wanted their friends to see it. It went on YouTube at about 8 o'clock at night on a Friday night. By 8 o'clock the following morning, the Saturday morning, we got 10,000 hits. Now, Gary and Tracy have got a lot of friends. I don't think there were 10,000 people missing from their wedding. Uh, it's now got 7.5 million hits on YouTube. I know, right? Um, it's a little bit scary and things went mad for a little while. Okay, did everybody love it and like it? No, not everybody loved it and liked it. Those two old ladies, by the way, were going to the toilet. That's what was happening there. Auntie Betty has got a bladder the size of a walnut. So um, they were definitely going to the loo, but not everybody loved it. I had phone calls left, right and center, emails from people who were very angry about what I'd done in a church and thought that I disrespected God and that Jesus was very, very cross with me indeed. Now, as I seem to recall, Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding as his first miracle. Um, so that's my kind of savior. Do you know what I mean? Party Jesus. That's what he's up for. So I kind of just went with it. I was really happy. Did I ask anyone's permission? Did I ask the bishop if I could do it? No, of course I didn't. I didn't phone the bishop and ask, tell him I was going to do that. Sometimes it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. That's what I think. So um, I just kind of went for it, really. That doesn't go for everything, by the way, only some things. Um, I just kind of went for it. Not everybody was happy, and I had to take some time off work because of the abuse that I got. I got a lot of trolling. I got a lot of people sending me nasty things. And I had to take some time away and think about what I'd done. It's like being on the naughty step, and it go away and think about what you've done. So I went away to think about what I've done. And I took a long time to pray over it and to ask God whether he really was cross with me. And he is cross with me, but he's cross with me about lots of things, so he might as well be really cross with me. But he also loves me and forgives me for when I mess up, like he does for all of us. But I really didn't think I'd messed up on this one. You see, I sat and I thought about what I did and whether there was grounds to be angry. And a friend texted me this. You took a risk, and it might pay off and it might not. But you get one chance at this, you get one shot. So risk everything. Risk looking stupid. Risk being misunderstood. Risk being ridiculous. Risk everything for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because you get one chance at this. And one day, I'll have to face God. And when I get there, and he asks me that question, what did you do in my name? I want to go, well, you might like to take a seat because this is going to take a while. Well, I did this and I did that and I did that and I messed this up and I got that right. But I did lots of things because it's the audience of one that matters, not the seven and a half million hits. It's walking away from this life and thinking, do you know, I gave that the best shot that I possibly could. I preached the gospel. I told people that God loves them immeasurably and that they are loved and that they are forgiven. So risk everything. Risk everything for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even if you risk looking stupid. Even if you risk doing the running man down an aisle in gold high heels. Did you see those high heels? Even if you have to risk everything. Risk everything for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can think of no better way to live your lives. I hope you have a fantastic day today. Let's take a moment to pray, shall we? So Heavenly Father, I want to pray for everybody here today. I especially want to pray for our young people. And I pray that you would fill them up and inspire them with your Holy Spirit. That even if they're not sure where their faith is today, that you would encourage them and strengthen them. And above all else, Lord, I pray that they would live lives full of your Holy Spirit. And I pray that they would know just how loved they are. Help us to take risks for your gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll see you later. You're welcome.